what are the things that I would like you to take away from this course? I think there are six takeaway morals. One, programming is a people discipline. Two, represent information as data, interpret data as information. Three, functions and methods should consume and produce data. Four, design functions systematically. Five, design systems iteratively. And six, use state only for sharing values. Let's talk about each of these in turn. Programming is a people discipline. You write programs so that others can read them. Your colleagues, your customers, your bosses, your maintainers, you. Next week or next month. You work with others as you develop programs. The earlier you can articulate your thinking, the earlier you can catch flaws. So we've given you a whole vocabulary to talk about your programs. And out there in the real world, nobody cares whether it's structural decomposition or structural decomposition plus accumulator. <laughs> but, if you, but if you can talk about your program intelligently in a way that your colleagues, whoever it is you're talking to, can understand, then you're ahead of the game. The earlier you articulate your thinking, the earlier you can catch flaws. And of course, the earlier you can catch flaws, the quicker and easier they are. Represent information as data, interpret data as information. So this is a slide we showed back on week one. And we showed it several times during the course. It's a slide that I hope is kind of in your dreamscape somewhere. Info, make this distinction between information and data. Information is what lives in the real world. You, as the programmer analyst, need to decide what part of that information needs to be represented as data. And then you just need to decide how that information is represented as data. And then you need to document how to interpret the data as information. So that the next person who looks at your program, including you, you the next day, knows what that data means, what it's talking about in the real world. You need to make your data mirror the information it represents. You need to understand the information in your problem area. You need to make the structure of your data mirror the structure of the information it represents. It's almost never strings or arrays in Carter. And you have to document it. By definition, the interpretation of your data, the thing that tells you how the stuff in your program relates to the real world is not part of your program. You have to write it down. You have to make an effort to write it down explicitly. Number three, functions and methods should consume and produce data. The functional model that we have spent most of the term doing makes it easy to create examples and test data. Makes your life easy to understand, makes your functions easier to understand, and easier to test, because you can just look at the values. For example, functions and methods shouldn't print. When you took Programming 101, as always, read a value from the input, write a value to the output. Yes? No? Yeah? You see, I told you everything you learned was wrong. <laughs> OK. Those folks started you off down the path to trouble. You got trouble in River City. Those folks led you down a bad, bad path. Avoid void. I didn't make it up, so I can, I can say that. And we'll talk about state a little bit farther down. One function or method per task. Okay. Small is good. Period. Big is bad. Period. 
You have complicated junk in your function. You must have put it there for a reason. Turn it into a separate function so you can document it and so you can test it. Use good function names. Function names should reflect their purpose because the person who is reading your code, placing your code where you use that function, only sees the function name. So you better give that reader a fighting chance by making that function name be useful and readable. If he wants to look into it, he can go read the purpose statement of the function. He or she can go read the purpose statement of the function. But most of the time, they're not going to. They're going to rely on that function name to give an honest account of what that function computes. Okay. Which means that function names are almost always nouns. It means that function names should tell, tell you the val kind of value returned, i.e., if you have check XXX, I hope that returns a boolean. Point four, design functions systematically. Go slow to arrive fast and safely. Follow the recipe. The structure of the data tells you the structure of your program. Structural decomposition for the win. Examples make you clarify your thinking. If you think about the examples, all of you'll be led to think about the corner cases that you need to worry about, the ones that are most difficult. And tests. If you write down tests, tests also help you clarify your thinking. They help, again, they help with the corner cases. Yep, there's a design recipe. Information analysis and data design. Contract and purpose statements. Examples. Design strategy. Function definition. Tests. Did I get it right? Oh, code. I changed I, <laughs> I change the name. How do you do, choose a design strategy? There are basically only two design strategies. They're trivial. You've got a trivial problem, you have a trivial solution, you have some straight line code, you have functional combination. Okay. Or the other possibility is you are reducing the problem to one or more simpler problems. And then you are reconstructing the solution to your problem from the solutions to the simpler problems. How do you find those simpler subproblems? Well, it could be that you have independent or sequential pieces. That's function composition. Or the simpler subproblems may be simpler instances of the same problem or closely related problems. Okay, so it may be that you can solve your problem by X, by solving the problem for a piece of your input. That's the basic idea of structural decomposition. Or you may have to be more clever about it. That's general recursion. And remember the recursion recipe. I think you guys know by now. I'll say it anyway, just because it's so much fun to say. Represent arbitrary size information using a self-referential or recursive data definition. Self-reference in the data definition leads to self-reference in the template. Self-reference in the template leads to self-reference in the code. While we're at it, let's talk about abstraction or generalization. Right, design, then abstract. Use the built-in abstractions whenever possible. Use map, fold, filter, for each. Those guys are your friends. But don't create new abstractions until you see examples. Anytime you do copy and paste, anytime you have repeated code, that's a possibility for abstraction or generalization. You look for a pattern. One is an exception, two is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Never write the same piece of code three times. But at least at the beginning, don't, don't go out of your way creating new abstractions until your code is working. 
as you get more experience, you can say, ah, oh, okay, I can refactor this on the fly. But right in the real world, when they talk about refactoring, they always say, okay, you start off with this code base and you observe the similarities, and you say, okay, I'm going to refactor. Refactor. That's that's the in name for what we call generalization or abstraction. And last but not least, don't reinvent the wheel. Do use other people's code or libraries or what have you whenever possible and whenever legal. Again, another real world consideration. You aren't or shouldn't be paid by the line. Point five, design systems iteratively. Most real world problems are simply too big and too complicated to be solved. What you have to do is you have to pick important pieces of information, important pieces of functionality, design your data, write the function, and repeat. Okay? Your new functionality may require new data designs, but you can still reuse your purpose statements, you can reuse some of your tests, you can reuse some of your contracts. Start from the top, the system design recipe. Write a purpose statement for your system, Design the data to represent the relevant information in the world. Make a list, wish list of main functions. Write down their contracts and purpose statements. And then design the individual functions. Maintain a wish list, or I, I like to say a wish tree of functions that you'll need to run. What do you do when you have a new feature? You perform the information analysis for the new feature. You modify your data definitions. Next, you update the existing functions to work with the new data definitions. That's the most important step that people forget about. Then, once you have your existing functions working with the new data definitions, then you can start writing the new functions for the new functionality. Six, and last, state is about sharing values. How do you tell the difference between a traffic light and a traffic light state? And the answer is, when the traffic light changes, everybody sees it. Sometimes you need this. And in the last week or two, we talked about some of the situations where you need it. But it's less often than you might think. Java and C++ and conventional programming languages train you to use state more often than you need. And having state in your program complicates everything. Are they seeing the traffic light or a model of the traffic light? When the traffic light turns green, the ones who are looking at the real traffic light get to cross onto the canal and the others do not. Now we know. Or, as they put it way back at the beginning of the 20th century, this is not a pipe. Right. The distinction between data and information hits us again. Okay, summary. You need never be afraid of this. The blank sheet of paper. <laughs> You know the questions to ask. What is the relevant information from the world? How should it be represented as data? What is the purpose of this system or function or method? How should I go from purpose to code? You know those are the questions to ask, and you know what the answers look like. You write down data definitions and interpretations. You write down contracts and purpose statements and examples and tests. And oh yes, you write some code. <laughs> so, go get it. We're ready to send you all off and do some real programming. Go get them, and good luck. Stay in touch. Thank you.